If you'd like to be able to listen to the show without ads and have full access to bonus content, that's an option. To find out how, please go to dogmanencounters.com forward slash podcast. Tonight's guest wishes to remain anonymous. With that in mind, I'm just going to call her Mary. Mary, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Well, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. Mary, please give us a brief bio on yourself. Well, I pretty much stay at home 24-7 these days with my significant other being the main one who is the income earner. So I'm here a lot, and I see and hear a lot of things that go on any time of the day or the night. And I have a small dog that has medical issues. So that means a lot of walks at night and various times of the day. So that also contributes to me being able to observe and see and hear a lot of things that maybe other people wouldn't be able to see or observe around me. Well, considering how crazy the world is anymore, I don't blame you for staying home most of the time. Speaking of your significant other, he doesn't know about your encounters. Why is that? He does not. We're both Native American. For whatever reason, he's very close-minded about a lot of these things. Although given a recent experience that happened in October, a little bit less so. But it is not a topic that he chooses to discuss or wants to discuss openly. So I essentially have no one to discuss this with in my life, day-to-day, any of the experiences that go on with me. That's horrible. Yeah, that's what I call a prison with no walls. That experience you just alluded to, do you think it was a dogman-related experience or something else? Yes, the most recent experience in October was dogman-related, but all of my experiences relating to the entity or creature known as dogman go all the way back to late January of this year. So all of my experiences that I've had so far actually only extend about a year. Well, they might only extend over a year's time, but as the listeners are going to hear, you've had a collection of them, like you said. From what I understand, you've had paranormal experiences your whole life, not including your dogman encounters. What kinds of experiences have you had? Well, beginning as uh, young as I can remember from a the time I could even remember having memories or opening my eyes or any of that, I've had experiences. And my experiences range anywhere from aliens and UFOs and alien abduction to ghost hauntings, objects moving in and out of my house, portals, cryptids, and all kinds of things going on. Pretty much anything you can think of, with the exception of maybe a lake monster, I've experienced that. Well, considering what you've been through, I think the whole lake monster thing is probably up next. I wouldn't be surprised. (laughs) Hopefully not, but maybe. Wow. You never know. You sure have caught it. You had one encounter with what you believe was a flesh and blood dog man, but the rest of your experiences you believe were with spiritual ones. What kind of dog man, in your opinion, is the worst kind to encounter? In my opinion, the flesh and blood dog man experience is more scary because when you're seeing this thing it's challenging mentally what we've learned our entire lives as far as evolution religion all those kinds of things it's mentally challenging that and it's upending the way you look at life and things in general and that's quite scary because when it is occurring at least for me I'm asking myself, is this really happening? Can I really be seeing what I'm seeing? It's quite a shock to the system. That it is. Yeah, like you said, when you have an experience with one of these things, it does tend to upend your life. What's your motivation for coming forward and sharing your dogman-related experiences on the show, Mary? Well, I have to admit, I've seen all your episodes and I've heard a lot of scared people out there and a lot of people who are very terrified who can't sleep at night. And I wanted to let people know that it is scary and it is kind of terrifying, but it will be okay. This is going to be something that will change your life and how you view things going forward, but it doesn't have to stop how you live. It doesn't have to stop enjoying the woods. And in fact, with my latest encounter, it can actually be a positive encounter if you choose to go that route with it. So I wanted to let people know it isn't all entirely bad and it isn't all entirely what they're perceiving it to be as far as some of the myths and some of the things that are being told in a lot of these crypto groups and 
paranormal groups online. Yeah, you're right. Life does go on. You really do need to focus on continuing to live your life and do the things you like to do, because if you stop, that would be a horrible thing. Exactly. It's ironic. Up until about a year ago, you thought dogmen were a joke. What more can you tell us about that? Well, the dogmen more or less found me, not me finding them. I did not go looking for this. This was a suggested group on Facebook that suggested join a dogman group. I assumed this was a band or something not related to cryptid at all. When I joined this group, that's when I discovered that dogman is a thing that people are seeing. This is some kind of phenomenon going on. People are having experiences. And that grew from there. Actually, in that group, one of the members suggested your show. And when I started watching your show and listening to it, you know, the first few episodes, I thought, this is a joke. These people are making these stories up to be on the internet. This can't be real. But then I kept listening on and on, and I started seeing photos, and I started seeing evidence online and realizing that this was a very real entity that people are experiencing. And then when I started having my experiences, you know, I kind of was like, well, I don't believe myself, and I don't think anyone's going to believe me at that point. Yeah, if I had a nickel for every eyewitness who never believed that Dogman or Sasquatch could even be a possibility, who had an experience and saw with their own two eyes that, guess what? They were wrong. Yeah, I'd be a rich man now. You think one of your encounters was with a werewolf and not a dogman. If that's the case, did that make that experience harder to deal with? Yes. It's easier for my mind to grasp. Now, this cannot be the case with other people, but for me, it's easier for my mind to grasp the idea that something could have evolved or be living in the woods that we're unaware of mostly because we don't have the full evolutionary tree. So it is possible and we don't have a full fossil record. So it is possible. But when you're talking about a person changing their entire shape and form, even maybe down to the cellular level into something else, that really makes you start questioning a lot of things in your life. Yes, it does. Yeah, as if believing the dogmen are out there, or I should say knowing the dogmen are out there isn't a tough pill to swallow. Thinking something like a werewolf could be out there is even harder to accept. If you've had a dogman encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let me know. All right, Mary, please tell us about your encounters now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. My first encounter was around the last week of January of this year, possibly the first week of February of this year. Now, I don't remember the exact date, but it was exactly at 3 a.m. in the morning because my dog woke me up. Now, remember, she has medical needs, so she needed to go and couldn't hold it. I have to carry her down the stairs of our apartment complex and walk her in the area below us where she can go to the restroom. It was exactly three because I always check my clock before I go out and walk the dog. We're walking. She's doing her thing. And we turn to go back to the house and walk back up the stairs. When I see a head that I can only describe as popping up over the concrete barrier between our complex parking lot and the grass and the complex on the other side of the barrier. The head I can only describe as being completely round with what looks like little tufts of hair coming out of it and two ears sticking up on the sides. Now, when I saw it, I thought it was surely losing my mind because it's totally black, completely devoid of light, no eye reflection, Nothing. And I literally saw just a head, no hands, no paws, no neck, no anything else. Two little ears were sticking up on both sides of the head. They weren't what you would consider a traditional dog ear. They're more like um, what a Doberman Pinscher's ears would look like if they'd been clipped. But you could see the little points and that was it. And I'm staring at it for maybe a few seconds before I carry the dog back up the stairs into the house and slam the door and lock it. 
And I have, of course, I look out the window and I don't see it there. I go back out in a few days to measure and see. I'm five foot six and my head just comes up to over the wall. So I know that this creature, whatever it was, had to be at least five foot six, maybe a little taller. It's interesting to note because I live in an extremely urban area. And this wouldn't be something that you would think would be in an urban area. But here we are, and this is something that it's a reality now that I have to deal with. It was that night, or maybe the next night, that I had a dream about this very same creature. And I'm going to call it a dream because it was more like an out-of-body experience at that point. Where this creature was carrying me back to my bed in its arms. And it looked down at me, and its eyes were totally black, and they were a little bit slanted, and its ears were the same ears, totally black fur. And it put me back in my bed, and it gave me a message, and it said, God sent me here to watch over you. Now, me, this is challenging my religion, my beliefs, everything I've ever believed or held sacred in my life, and uh, definitely stumped me. But I say it was a dream or maybe an out-of-body experience because when I woke up, I was in my bed. And I thought, well, what was that and what just happened? But I have no answers or explanations because I have not seen that same creature since. I believe that at least the first round head that I saw poke up over the edge of this concrete barrier wall could possibly be a werewolf. And I believe that because the person who I think that it could be lives on that side of the wall. Their house is the very end one right next to this concrete barrier slash wall. And um, anytime they're around dogs, dogs act very weird around them. They'll either be barking extremely aggressively like they're trying to get out and attack or they get completely silent. I've actually seen this person look at a dog and the dog go completely silent. And for the longest time, there was another dog over here and that dog's missing now and we don't know what happened to it. And this was a dog that was out barking all the time. And so did that person have something to do with that? I don't know. Is it kind of suspicious? Sure. But there's a whole host of other weird, unusual and paranormal things that happen around here. And so. I can't prove anything, but it would be a truly terrifying thought, even more terrifying than if this thing were just a plain dog man, if if someone were able to turn into a werewolf. And I have noticed on the traditional nights of a full moon, he actually stays in. This person is not out and about doing anything. And they have installed this year, really early this year, actually, in January, windows on their building on their particular unit and just their unit that reflect the light out and not in. And I thought that was unusual. It could mean nothing, but it could be something. But of course, given everything I've been through, I take all these observations into account and I just think about them and uh, kind of try to get on with my day as best I can. Now, the other reason why I think it might be someone who is a werewolf. Not too long after this happened, a few days, my neighbor next door asked me about something that had been left on their porch. And these were just old Coke bottles that had been filled with roaches, dead roaches, and they were left on her porch. But the same day that that happened, I noticed that there were weird scratches in threes, a lot of them, on my porch, dug into the concrete. And they were only on the porch between our two porches and on my porch. And there was a weird handprint on my door. So I began to put two and two together in my mind. And, you know, I'm wondering if this is witchcraft. And then given what I had just seen, I wondered if it was possible that somebody was able to do what they were doing, either through some kind of shape-shifting or witchcraft or whatever they were doing. Nothing else ever occurred with that particular incident or that particular entity after that. That would have been the first or second week of February. Nothing else happened after that. I then proceeded to have other occurrences throughout the year, up until mid-October, actually, of various types of activity, 
mostly Dogman, a few other things included. The next Dogman encounter I have that I will call a spiritual dog man because I'm not really sure exactly how else to describe it. I had just literally read Linda S. Godfrey's book where she talks about a man living in Hawaii and writing in and discussing how he had seen a dog man that could fly and it landed on this condo across from where he was at, etc., etc. Now, where I live, we were having really, really bad weather at the time. It was extremely windy. Linda had talked about in her book how some of these dogman like entities in Native American beliefs would ride the airwaves and the air currents. So a lot had been going on. I had been trying to help some local dog groups at that time save dog lives and uh, help dogs get off death row, essentially, with the pound and things like that. And we had just saved a dog that really, really, really needed it. It was only six months old, maybe. And that very same day that that happened, I looked out my front window and down at the trash. And I don't know why I did this, but I looked down to see what looked like a trash bag or what I thought was a trash bag sitting by the wall. Now, you have to understand that where the trash goes is right beside where the dogs go. And I could have easily mistaken a bag of trash for a dog or vice versa. But it's all very open. Anyone can see it. There are windows and doors that face that way. There are cars parked right out there. Anyone can pull up and park. So there is no privacy. When I looked down there, I thought perhaps it was a trash bag and then it moved. And I realized that whatever this was, was staring directly at me. And I can only describe it as a small German Shepherd almost type dog crouched down on all fours. And it moved like a dog would move if it's sitting and crouched when it shuffles its feet. And it had solid black fur that was extremely shiny. I mean, it reflected the light. Solid black eyes, round, solid black eyes, and black ears. And those were about the height of a German Shepherd's ears. And I had already been watching her show, and I'd already been in these groups online that discussed Dog Man, and immediately I thought, that's a Dog Man. And then I thought, well, how am I seeing it? And I panicked, of course, and I closed the blinds, and when I looked back out seconds later, it was gone. Then I second guess myself and I go look and see if maybe that was just someone's dog. Now, there was not a person out there near this being or creature. There was not a leash. There was nothing else out there. No person. So when I go out and look, in a matter of seconds, there's no dogs out there in the parking lot. There's no people. There's nothing. So I'm thinking to myself, I must have really just seen a dog man, and is that what they really look like? But it vanished so quickly that I could only assume, you know, maybe it is, it's coming from another realm, maybe a spiritual realm, maybe another physical realm, or maybe they just have the ability to cloak instantaneously because there's no way that I'm the only one who saw this thing. Later that same day, and this is when the gifting started, I found a weird little bead on my front porch, stuck in a crack on the porch. Now, of course, it had been windy, but you have to understand how the porch itself was constructed, which is concrete all around and little to no gaps to understand that for this bead to get up here, you would have to go up and around the concrete on the porch and land perfectly in a crack on the porch, which I don't know the statistics on that happening, but it seemed pretty unlikely to me. So I began to wonder, is this gifting like the Bigfoot are known to do? So, of course, I kept it because I wasn't sure if there would be any kind of repercussions from these beings if I didn't. And I began to leave dog treats and dog cookies out. None of those were ever taken. So I don't know if it was just the gesture or not the gesture. 
that ultimately meant anything. As the months go on and it gets hotter and hotter and it's summer, I see more and more of these things. And every time I see one, they're see-through. It's really hard to describe it, but it's like uh, a dog figure. But it's the coloring of a dog, except you can see through it. Now... Most of these sightings of one of these beings directly correlated with something that was going on in my life at the time. One I saw standing by the wall behind a bush, and it almost looked like it tried to become or was becoming part of the bush. And when I say what they look like, all of these types that I'm talking about at this point all look like your typical traditional Anubis type dog. Maybe the ears are a little bit shorter, but they have. A whitish gold glowing eye. They stand on two feet or two legs. They can crouch and or move around. And they have very pointy ears on the top of their head. Their heads are all about maybe from ear to ear, four to five inches. The eyes are a little bit further apart than that. The nose comes down very sharply and it's pointed. The body is very well defined. There's no body fat. There's no visible coat or hair. It is a dark hair, but it's very short, very shiny, very close to the body. You can see the muscles on them. But I use that term lightly because they're see-through. So am I really seeing muscles or am I seeing the spirit of some muscles? I don't know. I saw one crouched behind a bush. That one was probably no taller than five, five and a half feet tall. I saw another one with a head coming out of the bush. And it almost looked like it was laughing or joking or trying to check on me. Because the only way that I ever even noticed that these things were there was my dog started looking and noticing. She actually got to the point where she would go to where you could see them the most at. And she would stand there and wait for them. And at one point, one of them stuck its head out of a bush. That's the one with the tallest ears, same facial structure, same eyes, almost like a fox-shaped head, very sharp, tall, pointy ears, six, seven, eight inches tall each. And the head was see-through, though. And as soon as I saw it, you know, its mouth was open, almost in a laughing type of position. And when it opened its mouth and it saw us, it went back into the bush. After we saw that one is when we started seeing the very short cloaked being. These are short. They're cloaked. They're pretty terrifying. They're intimidating. They're very much like the first one I saw that was totally devoid of light, totally devoid of color. Three, four feet high, wearing some kind of flowing robe or cloak. Definitely had ears that you could see that were much shorter and pointier. And um, when I started seeing them, that preceded an event here that happened on the property where a neighbor's property got destroyed. So I'm not sure if they precede an event that's going to happen in, in someone else's life or if they helped to assist with that in some way or if they even just knew that that was going to happen. but. They were definitely here weeks, five or six weeks before the event happened, every week before it happened, even the night that it happened. Keep in mind, you know, I live in a very rural area. All these events going on are starting to freak me out. After that had happened, which was back in September, which was the last sighting we had here on the property, the second week of October, we leave and we go up north from where we reside. To go on vacation. Now, to tell you about the vacation spot and what happened there, I have to give a little backstory. I was and still am a huge fan of the Missing 411, and I had requested any of the Missing 411 books I could get last year for Christmas. I did not get around to reading them because I was extremely backlogged with other books I was reading at the time. 
That part is important for the story I'm about to tell you, which is probably the wildest story yet. We go on vacation in what's a missing 411 spot. I did not know that until after everything happened on this vacation and I came back home and researched this. When we're up there, we're up there about three days. And the first night we're up there, nothing really big happens. It's a beautiful setting. There's a river and a valley. It's gorgeous. I'm looking forward to time away. The next day we go down and we go to walk down the hill. Then the place where we're staying is partly on a hill, partly off. So it's kind of got propped up in the back with all these steel girders and things like that. So there's some infrastructure there, but it's all the rooms have this wild pitch where they're just feel like they're sliding downhill. So I was very eager at that point to get out of the hotel room and go walking down below us at the river. We leave, we go down to the river to hang out. There's Several chairs sitting down there. We get there. And we're sitting down and enjoying ourselves. And I begin having these thoughts that I'm not sure why I was having them. But I begin thinking, wow, that rock in the middle of the river there would make a great gifting rock. That I'm thinking, well, I wonder what would happen if there were cryptids in the woods right now watching us. My partner gets up. And they go to walk around down the river and they see a rock stack here and then they see a rock stack further down. And they say about the second rock stack, well, I can't get there because there's so many weeds and thorns and bushes in the way. And I just dismissed it because this is a trend that you see online with people doing when they go to places. And I assumed it was just some something a human had done at this point. But he asks that I get up and go and look. So I do. Now, keep in mind with all this going on, I'm having to walk with canes because of my physical disabilities. So it's not easy for me to walk around in slippery rocks and water and moss and all these things and get anywhere. As I get up and walk, I hear a growl. This is not a growl like anything i've ever heard it's deep it's loud it's very precise it's aimed right at me and it echoes around me with off everything off rocks off trees off the buildings and my partner says well that's someone's dog ignore it and i go what dog where And I'm desperately looking for this dog wherever it could be, and I'm seeing nothing. I walk, we go stare at the rock stack, and I realize the rock stack and further down the river is completely covered with brambles, bushes, thorns, all kinds of things. We go back, we sit down in our chairs, we prepare to just enjoy nature. Lo and behold, as we look down at this rock in between us, I notice that there's something on the rock. It's a little round circular hair tie or what you would use to pull your hair back. There is a wet mark beside it on this rock that looks like a knuckle imprint. And we both go, that wasn't here before. And then I thought, well, did something gift us something? Well, I'm thinking, thinking, Okay, we have to give another gift because I don't want to anger whatever could be here. So we proceed to pick three rocks out of the river bottom and put them on the gifting rock that I had already picked out. Or at least I thought I had picked that out. It's important to note later that my partner only picked one rock and I picked out two. And the only rocks that were taken were the two that I picked. And that's important for what I'll tell you next. We go back down to sit down. We're there untold amount of time, enjoying the peace and quiet. When I begin to notice what look like dark shaped figures, trying their best to hide underneath a tree, in the shadows. And I have to ask my partner, are you seeing anything? Oh yeah, I've been feeling like I've been being watched for quite some time now. 
not too much longer after that was when I witnessed a totally black figure, all black fur, stand straight up from a seated position and walk quickly from right to left across the river from us. At that point in time is when my partner said, we need to go back to the hotel room. So we leave where we're at. We go back up the hill to the hotel room. I ask him, "Did what did he think that was? He immediately thinks it's Sasquatch. I'm not too sure. We took several pictures. We took a few video. I start reviewing them. And I don't want to tell him what I'm seeing in the photos. But in the photos, there's several dark figures. Some of them look like dogmen. One of them looks like a small child. Some of them look like fairies. One of them looks like a fairy wearing a crown standing on top of the roof of this building. And in one of them, beside this really weird figure, is two dog-shaped figures. One is completely hairless, but it looks like a dog, but it's completely hairless, and it's sitting there crouched down. The other one is a dog, or a true wolf-looking face, white and black, with blue eyes. But it's big. It's a big head. And it's standing right beside this other creature, almost like it's protecting it. And it's staring right at us as we're taking the photo. Did I see that or any of those beings while I was down there? No. I only saw the one dark figure that got up and walked briskly from right to left. And what I thought were a few other figures across the river. We both agree. We don't want to anger whatever these things are. So we do other things and agree the next day. We'll go back and check the gifting spot, and then we'll leave it be. We do other things. We're on vacation. We go get food. We do the normal things a person on vacation would do. That night, after what I had just seen during the day, I could not sleep. And that's when we both heard something or some things walking around the property. The next day is when we began to realize... (laughs) That no one was staying overnight at this property. Not one single person who checked in had stayed overnight. And my partner asks, I wonder what they saw or thought they saw. Everyone with the dog had left. There was no one left. It was just us. We go back down to the river the next day. And we check the gifts. At first, when we get there... Of course, I'm having to use my canes because I'm basically immobile without them at this point. There are two people down there by the river already. And there's one man talking loudly and there's two people talking really loudly. And I began to realize we're not even going to be able to check the rock. We're not even going to be able to hang out down here. This is a total waste today. Big disappointment for me, but it is what it is. My partner checks the gifting rocks anyway. And realizes that the two that I had picked out were gone. The one he had picked out was still there. Which we both thought was very interesting. Because if someone had picked those rocks up. We assumed a human would pick up all three and not care. So. I insist we go just a little bit further down river. Where I can at least get some good nature shots. And send them back home to my mom. So we walk down the river. Can still hear people. Walk down the river, walk down the river, keep walking. We get to the other rock stack that was there the day before. Well, the rock stack has changed. All of a sudden, all the bushes that were there before were gone. There's no stickers, there's no thorns, there's no poison ivy, there's no poison oak, there's nothing left there. And there's this giant, what looks like an axe head, laying on the rock that the rock stack is on. Now, having looked at it yesterday, I could say, well, this axe-looking thing is easily three to four times bigger than the one was the day before. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I try not to make a big deal out of it because I'm still thinking and hoping in my mind, you know, maybe this is people doing this and someone's down here and they're 
videoing this and they're putting it on their social media. So we keep going further and further down the river because there's a clear path now where there wasn't the day before. I didn't think too much of it because I hadn't seen all the way down the path the day before. We walk one, two hours maybe. I start to see what is ahead of me that looks like two houses, one on each side of the river. Nice little A-frame house. Big, they look huge. And I thought, well, this is where the journey ends because this river is going to empty out into their backyards and we're going to have to turn around and go back to the hotel. Well, I walk a few more steps and I look up. Where did the houses go? They weren't there. A little bit further down, we come across a really nice view, really nice waterfall, and there's a trailer park up on the hill overlooking it. Very nice maintained trailers, very clean. Everything's really quiet. There's not a person, there's not a car, there's not a dog, there's not a cat, there's not a bag of trash, there's nothing. And I thought, well, you know, first things first, I'm thinking this is someone's either home or vacation spot. And secondly, we're in their backyard. They're not going to appreciate us being back here for very long. We need to hurry up. So we take videos, we take pictures. We see a huge giant Sasquatch across the river. Massive. He's totally gray and silver and he's just really old looking. And then I see what I thought was a skinny, skinny, lanky, all black dog like creature for the down. But it moved so quickly that I couldn't get a video or picture. So I thought, well, okay, we need to turn around and go back now. Well, we turn around and go back, and I walk a few steps. We get to some bushes, and my partner goes, what are these large footsteps? Well, are these what look like large toe holds in the dirt? Well, this toe hold is only four toes, not five. And the toe spread is easily five or six inches. And it looks like something was standing on its toes or the ball of its feet and digging them into the dirt. I mean, these are deep imprints. Um, I don't know what it was. We assumed it could have been a dog, man, because it was so deep and, and dug into the dirt. And then there are all these berry bushes everywhere. And then I look down and I see what looks like a rock covered in weird runes. And I told him, you know... This is all just getting very weird. At some point in time, once we passed that rock stack going into wherever we were at this point, it got totally quiet. I couldn't hear anything but the water. No birds, no animals, no cars, no people, no nothing. We literally take from the berry bushes to where we're going about 10 steps. Now, mind you, we've been walking hours, 10 steps, and we pass this rock stack again on the left. And we're all of a sudden back at the hotel again. And I turn to him and ask, what just happened and how is that possible? Because it should have been a few hours. When we get back to where we were, it is totally quiet. In a matter of steps from where we were to passing the rock stack, you can hear again. There are sounds in the air. But every one had left being by the river. The weather was even different. There were low-hanging clouds and fog rolling in. I reached back because I'm still within reaching distance of the rock stack. And I leave a gift on the rock stack. Because at this point in time, A, I'm glad I brought a gift and didn't tell anyone. B, something really, really weird just happened. And I don't want to make angry whatever did this. <laughs> so... We go up the hill. Of course, I'm struggling, but I get up the hill. We get back to the hotel room. Walk the dog, everything else, blah, blah, blah. Sit down. We left at 9.47 a.m. that morning. And I know because I checked the clock because I wanted to be out of there at 
we get back to the hotel room, it's 10, 15 a.m. Not even 30 minutes had passed from when we left to when we came back and we'd been hiking for hours. When we get back, my partner suddenly goes, hey, my back doesn't hurt anymore. And I'm really confused as to what just happened. And I start reviewing photos. And I start going over video. And in the photos and in the video, just like the day before, there are all these weird entities and creatures and beings. And there's these weird dog-like beings. Some of them are all black. I think only one had the white like face like the day before. At this point in time, I'm thoroughly freaked out. Not knowing that we had just checked off on our list most of the points for a missing 411. Not knowing that we were vacationing right dead center in the middle of a missing 411 location. Not until I got home did I know any of that. So. Later that same day, we agree we're not going to go back down in this valley area and the river area again. Later that same day, we go to a store down the road. And they had, this store had been closed before. We go in the store and uh, there's all these Kachina dolls. Now... My partner has a lot of experience with Kachina dolls. His grandmother used to collect them when he was a child. And he has a lot of paranormal stories to tell about the Kachina dolls. Today, I never really believed those. So on that day, when I was in the Kachina doll store and they sold other crafts, we were actually discussing Kachina dolls. And I actually made a laugh and a joke about the Kachina dolls. And he goes, you shouldn't have done that. Well, ironically enough, as things go, we end up buying a book about Kachina spirits and Kachina dolls. On my way out of the store, me panicking at this point because so many weird things have already happened on the trip. I apologize to the Kachina dolls and tell them, I'm sorry I made a joke. Please don't send anything home to haunt me. I respect you. That night, before we leave town, several things happen. One, that when we're in the bedroom of the hotel, sitting there on the bed discussing how we're going to leave town the next day, a dark, see-through, bird-type thing flies through the room and into the bathroom. Now, I'm facing the door where it came in at. He's not. I see it. And I'm like, oh, great. I don't know what this is. It can't be good. That same night, I woke up to hearing popping noises going on all around. These weird popping noises going on all around the floorboards, the building, everything. And then I had a dream about being visited by one of these Kachina spirits. Then it was standing in the bathroom. The next day, I wake up and... I don't have time to tell him about this. I don't have time to discuss any of that. You know, we have to leave because we have things to do and get back home to deal with. On the way home, our GPS keeps trying to recalculate. And this recalculation is way out of the way. And it makes no sense because there's no clog on the highway ahead of us. There's, there's no backup. So I tell him, keep going down the highway like we're supposed to go. Well, <laughs> we don't get much further past the exit that we should have taken until we get behind a U-Haul 18-wheeler. The U-Haul 18-wheeler starts to raise up on one side. It starts to literally lift up onto one side of the, of the trailer. Now keep in mind, we're driving on a two-lane highway. The other half of the highway is up and behind a sheer drop-off of a mountain that they cut through. And so there's nowhere to pull off. So we have sheer mountain on one side and about two feet of a little bit of excess road and a sheer drop-off on the other side. There's nowhere to go. So he hits the gas. 
And I don't have time for my life to flash before my eyes because I'm too terrified. I'm going, great, the dog's in the car. I'm going to die. This is how I die. And I'm going to literally kill my dog today. Wonderful. So we go to speed past the U-Haul. And the U-Haul is really lifted up. And I am terrified because I think we're going to get hit. And I just squeeze my eyes shut because at that point in time, I don't want to know. Let's just get through this. If we live, I'm going to have to probably crawl out of this car from somewhere. And the next thing I know, he goes, we're past it. I don't know how, but we're past it. That thing should have hit us. I don't know what just happened. And uh, that's when I tell him that I'd had the dream about the Kachina spirit. And he goes, don't you think that maybe that you should have told me that before we left the hotel this morning? Well, you know, I didn't think it was important. When I got home, ever since I've got home from the vacation I took, which really was terrifying for me and not much of a vacation i've had really vibrant dreams i've had really weird strange dreams i've had weird strange lights in my bedroom just so many things going on and uh when i reviewed a lot of the footage which i still have not gone through all the photos videos and everything that uh were taken on that vacation there are dog men in the photos and videos there are bigfoot there's what looks like a little boy in one of the photos. After I found out that we were actually vacationing in a missing 411 spot, there's what looks like one of these people who went missing in that area in one of the photos, but it's not like him. It's like, it's hard to describe, not, not even a ghost, like some kind of other, like a person that's there, but not there almost. And he's in this photo and it's just, there's so many weird things. There's weird spirits. There's... One of the things which we think is a Kachina spirit. So there's there's so many things. And um, even when we went to eat, even when we went to go get gas, even when we went to do anything, any and all the photos I looked at had uh, some kind of cryptid in them. All of them. We were being watched the whole time. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Since getting back, you know, there's been other weird things going on. Was it all? All of it dogman related? No. Do I think I'll probably have other dogman related encounters here very soon? Sure. But the, the activity itself never really has lit up. As far as anything else goes, any other activity, one could say that all of this activity initially started back in 2020 with me accidentally purchasing a haunted object, which I did not know at the time was haunted. And more or less, since that was in the house, that's what led to the cascading effect of so many other things going on in my house and so many other things going on with me. But even after I got rid of the haunted object, the other paranormal activity was still going on. It just was not going on in the house anymore at that point. I believe on some level that the dogmen, the spiritual dogmen, were attracted to the activity that was going on in the house. I think somehow maybe a portal opened up. I don't know. And on some level, I do feel like that they were protective because it was almost like that they were showing up when an event, an event was going to happen, almost like they were trying to warn me. Definitely when the object was here in the house, at one point in time, and this is not something that I've ever told anyone, at one point in time, I awoke in the middle of the night to what I can only describe as a doorway being opened in the middle of the wall and behind it, it looked like it was just like a staticky, you know, whatever, but a being was poking its head through and the being looked exactly like you'd expect the predator to look like from the predator movies. And it poked its head out, opened the door, poked, looked as if it was checking on me, as if it was making sure I was okay. And then close the door. So there's been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of activity going on. Um, this has actually probably been since the trip up north on vacation. The least amount of activity I've had in a while. But I, I do think the dogmen were somehow, some way, attached to it. I believe they knew what was going on. I believe that in some way they were here as a warning, maybe a protection. And uh, I believe they'll probably be back at some point in time, should anything else major be going on in my life. 
I'll probably see them again. As far as it goes, that's all I have as far as dogmen go. Now, <laughs> I have a whole lifetime of a bunch of other experiences, not to mention everything that happened with the haunted object that was in the house and everything that happened in the house. And to some extent, this is kind of still ongoing, but not really. But um, as far as the dogmen aspect goes, that's where we're standing right now with that phenomenon and that particular entity, we'll say. It's a lot to process. You sure have been through it. When you saw that first dog man looking at you over the wall, was it showing any emotion? I couldn't even see any eyes, any facial features, any anything. But it's like it popped up over the wall to surprise me. Like it knew I was there and was watching me. You couldn't see any facial features, but... Was it moving in a particular way that might have tipped you off that it might have been upset, or was it stock still? It was It was still. It was just, I, you know, for whatever reason, I was looking over the wall, looked back that way, and this head, and only the head, pops up over the wall. It didn't move. It didn't do anything. It was like it was just staring directly at me. And I didn't see any eyes or facial features. I could only see the outline of the head like what was short tufts of hair on the head and uh, the two weirdly shaped little ears pointing upwards. How close did you say you were to it? I actually didn't and I should have. So my building faces a parking lot and the parking lot has a wall that borders it and on the other side is a lot of grass and condos. Now, the parking lot is two car lengths long and then another car length in between. So three car lengths. That's how far away it was. Yeah, that's pretty close. Before you took your dog inside, was there maybe a slight urge to get closer to take a better look? No. I was sufficiently freaked out, but in my mind, since that was the first experience I had, I just assumed I was hallucinating something. And of course, when I looked back, it wasn't there, so. Well, yeah, you were freaked out, and understandably so, but you know it is. When there's that car crash, you can't help but watch and see everything unfold, so that's why I was wondering about that. After having all this time to think about that dream you had that night where the dogman told you it was sent to watch over you, how sure are you it was a random dream and not actually connected to the dogman you saw looking at you over the wall? Given the other dreams I had since I came back from the vacation and how wildly specific they were and how I was dreaming about places I had never even been that actually do exist, I do think some of the dogmen were sent here to be guardians and watch over. Yeah, that just might be the case. You never know. If the guy who you think just might be a werewolf really is one, are you terrified of him noticing that you're on to him? Oh, yeah. I try not to look at his house even, and I try not to be out when he is, and I kind of just try to be really quiet and hurry up and get inside if he's out there. He's pretty scary, so, you know, even if he wasn't one, he's still not somebody I'd want to make mad. I don't even want him to know that I exist at this point. Yeah, I can understand that. He does sound pretty creepy. You told us about the scratches you found in the concrete on your porch. Did you notice which one of those three scratches was longest by chance? Um, it kind of goes in the pattern of the one in the middle is the longest, and then the two on the sides aren't quite as long. But there's so many, and they're still there. It's just that because of all the dirt outside, you can't really see them. But if you wash the porch, you can definitely see that they're still there. So the one in the middle definitely is longer. Yes. Hmm, I see. When the dog man that was dumpster diving saw that you saw it, did it seem to be upset about you noticing it? No, it was just more or less hanging out right by there. I got the impression that it was sitting there before I even looked out my window. When I looked out, I saw it and it was staring right dead in my eyes, like <laughs> right at my window, like it knew I was going to be there. And then, of course, I panicked and then... When I'd look out to see if I was actually seeing what I thought I was seeing, it wasn't there anymore. I'm glad it disappeared. How intelligent do you think dogmen are, Mary? Um, whether physical or spiritual or whichever one that you would be thinking of or talking about, I think in, as a whole, whatever they are, they're incredibly intelligent. Um, 
I absolutely believe that they just want to be left alone by us. And uh, I think a lot of them just sit back and observe because I've probably walked by now that I know what I'm looking for many of them in my life. And as was the case on the vacation we took, I didn't even see it. But it's clearly there in the photos. And so there's no telling how many times that happened and I walked right by it. Could it have hurt me? Sure. Did it? No. Did it growl at me? Yeah. Wasn't too happy, but it was within an arm's reach of me. They could have easily done whatever it wanted to do and didn't do anything. I don't know how they do it, but yeah, that happens a lot with both Dogman and Sasquatch. They can be right there and you're none the wiser until you go and look at a photo that was taken and bam, they're right there next to you. Do you see it as being a good thing that they seem to be so intelligent or a bad thing? I think it's neither one at this point. I think it's just evolutionarily at this point. I think it has something to do with evolution and dogs themselves are pretty intelligent. So we're talking about something that's between a human and a Sasquatch and a dog. And it's, it's highly intelligent. And I think it's just an evolutionary process at this point. I don't think there's anything that we really have a say in at, at this point with that. No, we definitely don't have any say in any of it. It is what it is. And yeah, that's all there is to it. Do you think the smaller ones you saw that seemed to be wearing cloaks might have actually been skinwalkers? Yeah, I have wondered about that. And that's kind of my running theory is because even as intelligent as the dogmen seem to be, only certain ones seem to wear cloaks or clothes. And a lot of those seem to be found or seen in close proximity with humans. And so I think, and my personal theory is that the ones that you see wearing clothes are probably either skinwalkers or shapeshifters or something like that. Well, it definitely seems like there's something going on there because, yeah, that definitely doesn't seem to fit with normal dogman behavior. Have you put any research into trying to find out if the place where you went up north with your partner, where so many people have gone missing, has had a lot of dogman encounters reported there or not? Um, I've looked. Now, there aren't many reports that I can find, but I will say that it could be something that's happening and people aren't really noticing it or observing them. Now, I did ask at least one local person who stated that they have large black cats up there. And as you know, there is no native of large black cat to our continent. But she stated that there were many sightings of what they thought were large black cats with like large slanted eyes and really pointy ears. To me, it sounded like it could be a dog man, but I didn't want to tell her that because I didn't want to scare this poor lady. Yeah, it sure does sound like that might be what's going on. Considering the experiences your partner's had with you, it sure is hard to understand why he's still so reluctant to acknowledge that you might be dealing with dog men when the two of you have had those experiences together. Does that frustrate you? Yes and no. I guess it's whatever helps him sleep at night at this point, and I'm not going to disturb his peace any more than it already has been. He's had a lot of experiences of other types in his life. So, you know, if he's got to that point in his life where not knowing is better than knowing for him, that's fine with me. As far as myself, I actually just keep finding out more whether I want to or not. And it is what it is. And I just try to live with it. Yeah, that's about all you can do. And as far as he goes, yeah, sounds like he does know what's going on. He just doesn't want to admit it because, like you said, he wants to be able to sleep better at night. It sounds like you came close to accepting their existence in front of you when the two of you found those prints, though, where those toes were pressing into the dirt. Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell because dogs typically have four toes or appendages and then a duke claw on the back. So <laughs> it's pretty hard to deny what that is. And I just think that he, right about the time that he saw that, it was like, okay, it's time to get the H out of here. and. And I was like, okay, well, I can only go so far because I'm pretty disabled at this point. And uh, it was like literally two or three more steps, five steps. And we're suddenly back where we were. And I'm like, how did we get back here this fast? We've been hiking for hours. So <laughs> and that's about the time that, they, that he really shut down. Like, okay, I, this is too much. I can't deal with this. So we've not talked about it since the vacation. And I don't want to bring it up. You know, I have a pretty good idea what I think happened. And, and if he needs to sleep at night and not think about this, then I'm okay with that. Wow. Maybe you two stepped through a portal and that's how you got back so quick. 
I really do believe that in my heart because there's like no other way that I can equate that time differential between leaving at 947 and getting back at 1015. Where were we for hours on end? And then we climb back up the hill and it's 1015. There's just no other way to say other than we stepped through a portal and some kind of time fluctuation and, you know, dimensional fluctuation there. And here we are back on planet Earth again or wherever. <laughs> yeah, it does make you wonder. That's definitely a hard one to explain away. Yeah. Well, I have heard one account very similar to that. If this will make any sense or help explain it. There was a pilot that flew over the Bermuda Triangle in South Miami area decades ago, and he went through some kind of portal thing, and he was supposed to be flying for 30 minutes, an hour or whatever, and he came out like less than 15 minutes out of this portal. But the thing was is that none of his technology was working when he was in there. And all of a sudden, he's on the other side. He was in there a couple of minutes, and he passed lots of time in airspace while he was in there. I can't remember all the details, but if you look it up, it's a widely known Bermuda Triangle account. Yeah, I don't know all that much about the Bermuda Triangle, but I do know that a lot of cases like that have happened there. Yep. You said that you think you're going to have another one, but if you had your way, would you prefer to never see another dogman as long as you live, or would you actually like to see another one someday? Uh, no, actually the direct opposite. And I'll tell you why. i tell you why I would prefer to see one actually in person. And that's because it would actually solidify in my mind that it is real and I'm not going crazy or anything like that. And it would solidify in my mind that what I'm seeing isn't just something from a spiritual realm, that it's actually something physical. I'd love to see a physical one as long as it was nonviolent, non-confrontational, so that I know that the physical ones exist because still to my mind, most of everything I've seen, if not everything I've seen is, is something on some kind of other spiritual realm or level. Well, I can answer that for you. They definitely are in existence and you're not crazy. I know you might start to wonder when you have these strange experiences, but you're not crazy. What's happened happened and yeah, that's all there is to it. I believe you. Well, thank you. You are welcome. Well, it's about time for us to get out of here, Mary. But before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Just to reiterate to everyone that when you're in that kind of situation, especially if you're out in the woods with one of these things, don't confront it. Don't make eye contact if you can avoid that. But walk quickly away. You know, we don't really have any idea what kind of prey response these things have. It could be extremely primordial or they could be extremely developed and be more closely in, in their thought patterns to humans than we realize. But don't do anything to antagonize it. Don't do anything to even acknowledge it. I can guarantee you that if you can see it, it already knows you're there. So just keep walk quickly out of the area and exit the area as quickly as you can. Even if you have to leave some stuff behind and come back for that later or not come back for it at all. But it's better to walk away and be safe than to stick around and try to get more information or push for photos or push for anything else and end up being a missing 411. Because knowing what all I know now and seeing what all I have seen now, I do think that some of these creatures are responsible for some of these missing 411 cases. Well, that's all very good advice, Mary. I couldn't say it any better myself. Having said that, thanks again so much for coming on and sharing those experiences with us. And yeah, if you ever need help in the future, please do let me know. Will do, and thank you so much for having me. Well, you know you're welcome. Thanks again so much. Have a great night.